dance for joy or lust or anger in every time you have Welcome to Sensible Second Hand Review, the series where we look at sensible and practical cars that you can buy for a budget of between one and five thousand pounds. This is a 2016 Nissan Pulsar C13 1.2 N connector. But is it any good? Should you care? Let's find out, shall we? So the Nissan Pulsar C13 might initially sound like quite a familiar combination of letters and numbers, but they weren't very popular over here. The Pulsar name was used in many countries to denote versions of what we would call the Sony over here for many, many years. And in fact, some Pulsars did come over here as sort of semi-official imports in the days of things like the N13 and N14 Sunnies. But this particular Pulsar's got nothing to do with any of the Sunnies, or for that matter the Almera that finished um, production for our market in about 2007. This one came out in 2014 and it lasted until 2018. The unfortunate thing with the Pulsar was that this was not a fashionable type of car really for someone to be introducing onto the market in 2014. Nissan had done really well with the uh, J10 Qashqai that was launched around the same time the Almera was discontinued and sort of replaced that and the Primera. Obviously not everybody likes these SUVs and Nissan probably thought that, well, you know, we've, we're doing very well with these other two cars. The Duke was out by then as well. Um, why don't we try to recapture a bit of that market that we used to have with the Almera? There's a certain type of person that is quite fond of the Almeras and the Sunnies. Um, but unfortunately, that didn't really work that well. So the car didn't last anywhere near as long as I thought. Two engines principally with one of these. Um, this 1.2 with uh, 113 horsepower and then the one that I, I would prefer, the 1.6 of 187 horsepower. If those seem suspiciously familiar, um, <laughs> that's because they're exactly the same engines as in the J11 um, Qashqai and in fact this whole, this whole car is based on the same platform as one of those as well. There were also some diesels, but as usual, due to controversial government legislation and all kinds of other reasons, uh, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. One thing I must say about this Pulsar is actually it makes quite a good noise. I don't know why, but it, it does. The six-speed manual in this is also quite nice to operate. It's quite pleasant, really. So let's have a look at the uh, C13 Pulsar then. I mean, we do see them around, but they weren't exactly popular. I mean, nowhere near as popular as a Duke or a Qashqai. One thing you notice straight away when looking at the side of the car is just how long the rear door is. We'll um, look and see that how much space that actually produces in a little while. I don't think there's anything particularly ugly about the car or offensive. It's just. It just looks very sort of standard and you know, sort of blended into the background. I think that was one of the main problems with these, is that they didn't sort of have the sort of fashionable look that uh, you know a cash guy or a jig would have had. Boot space though is excellent. It's about 385 litres, which was at the time a lot bigger than the Focus. The main problem though is we've got this enormous lip in terms of loading into the back of the car, which is a bit of a problem. The average person who this was aimed at, and I think maybe the, 
average age of one of these was a bit bit more than a Qashqai, I was probably not going to be able to reach down so easily and um, get to the tyre inflation kit and things when he needed it. I'd prefer a spare wheel, but I don't even know if he's came with one to be honest, which is annoying, but you know, there we go. Are there any sort of hooks for putting this parcel shelf on? Oh yes there are. Um, they're rather sort of there, they're little sort of white things. We'll just hold this up anyway because it's a bit quicker. Yeah, this car is still um, needing a bit of preparation before it goes on sale at Langley Prestige um, near Colchester. Yes, they've moved. Um, but uh, yeah, it's not it's not too bad. These things haven't actually broken, it's just, it's just been taken off. One thing that's interesting on this N connector model is that we haven't got any parking sensors. We've got a camera, but we've not got any parking sensors. You could actually get a 360 camera system on one of these, but this car doesn't have it for some reason. You've got keyless entry though, we've got some diamond cut alloy wheels, so I suppose that's one thing. Something else though is the space. Now the space is huge, like ridiculously huge. I mean, kind of bigger than some cars in the class above. Certainly, even like a Skoda Octavia, it's bigger than one of those. It's absolutely vast. It's, it's ridiculous. Look at all this space here. It's certainly far bigger than a Golf or a Focus or an Astra or say a Leon or something like that. Headroom's also really good. I mean, the interior plastics aren't the best, but this wasn't a particularly expensive car when it came out. It, it, it's fine. Um, not talking here about maybe quality of plastics in an Audi A3 sort of territory, but it didn't cost the same money as an Audi A3. Yeah, really comfortable. We've got little vents down there as well. There's like cup holders. No, it's the back of the armrest. That's a shame. Uh, do we get an armrest? Yes, we do. And this comes with all, apart from the uh, base trim. That's good. Yeah, I think you could easily get three adults in the back of here. It's quite a wide car as well. Um, in some ways, this is more practical than the J11 cash car it's actually based on. Wow. Um, yeah, we've got sort of part leather upholstery. We've got a bit of fabric down there. It's a shame that that bit of the door's not fabric as well, but never mind. Uh, I've got some double level um, door bins for some reason. Mat pockets, that's a lumbar support as there. Yeah, it's quite a, it's quite a well equipped in this trim level for certain. It's just, you know, not the most imaginative interior, but a car like this, I don't think particularly needs one, the sort of person who's going to buy it. So that's okay. Right, uh, let's get to the front, shall we? Yeah, key entry on this model. Seats are nice and comfortable. There would be the key if you had a less suspect one. Ooh, we've got soft touch uh, door tops here. That's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. Leave the whole dash. I mean, that bit is is hard, but oh, that bit's squidgy. That bit's not. And the whole thing kind of has been sort of sculpted out. It's weird, isn't it? It's automatic wipers, automatic lights, stereo controls, cruise control. This car's got a six-speed manual and uh, we've got good old-fashioned handbrake, which is fantastic. Centre armrest. Excellent, yeah, oxid and everything down there. Brilliant, yeah. So we've got everything that we we need really. A couple of cup holders there. There's the start stop button. Um, little cubby hole in there. Got Jules on climate control. All modern conveniences. Right, if we press this button here, what happens? Ah, right. Yeah, we have got a colour touch screen. Hopefully the radio won't come on, viewers. Oh, we've got another and everything. I wonder if it will pick up where we are. Yep, we are on a random country road in the middle of Essex. Great. Okay. Uh, well, I don't think we've got any sort of Android Auto Apple CarPlay in this. 
we go to the main menu. Ooh, where is the main menu? Is it just can we press that? Oh, yeah, it's just that one. Um, camera. Maybe that won't be exciting. No, that's just literally for the <laughs> guidelines on the camera. That's not exciting. How about setup? Will that do anything? All right, navigation, Bluetooth, blah, 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 blah. Not that exciting. Uh, nav, map. Yeah, it's not that exciting views, is it? Not really. So if we go one further, and if I start the car up, pressing the clutch down, as it keeps telling me to do so, yeah. Tire pressure warning. Wonderful, exciting. Do we get a nice reversing camera? Yeah, it's a bit low definition, but this is from 2016, so never mind. Turn our engine off, we don't need that. We do also have some um, information in the middle here. Uh, is that right? So we, there we go. That's not very exciting, is it? There's nothing going on. Maybe we get more going on if we go into here. Right, yeah, I don't, I don't need to press the clutch. Don't need that. Don't need that. Right. Ah, oh, there we go. That's better, isn't it? Right. Um, yeah. Distance, time, fuel economy two, compass, audio off, good. Tire pressure monitoring, boring warnings. What kind of settings can we have? Driver assistance. What do we have in here? Driving aids. We have just A, B. We don't have, like, the full suite of things in here. Um, some of these came with lane departure warning, blind spot warning, object motion detection... Um, and um, that sort of stuff. You get a 360 camera. This is only a five inch screen, by the way. It's nothing exciting. Right, let's check to see if we get the secret mission documents in here. Oh, it looks like we might. Oh no! Viewers, I almost broke my secret mission documents. That's not good, is it? Oh, it's, it it's not wide enough. Oh, viewers, I'm really disappointed with that. I mean, the manual fits in there nicely enough, but this does not. Oh, oh. Let's just put it in there and try not to be disappointed. Quite big uh, door bins. I've got a sunglasses holder. Although that, that feels really cheap. The rest of it's not too bad, apart from that bit of the dash. Um, and the soft touch door tops. We have got electric windows and mirrors and things like that. And there is a bottle holder down there. Um, bought a stop start and everything. Not really a lot else to say. It, it's not really the kind of car that gets your pulsar racing. I know, that was a terrible joke. Let's uh, go and look at the engine. That might be a bit more interesting than my terrible jokes. Right, viewers, the uh, 1.2 engine also shared with the second generation cash car, which we've had on the channel before, though it was a uh, 1.3, which is a later one. This engine, yeah, it's not the most reliable unit ever. They can have problems with oil consumption, they can have timing chain problems. If you really want one of these cars, I would go for the 1.6. That's a much more reliable engine, although there's not really very many of those around. The vast majority of these pulsars are the 1.2 or the engine that we can't talk about because we don't talk about diesels on this channel. I uh, suppose it looks okay. Um, front end's kind of again similar to the J11 Qashqai. It's not, you know, ugly or anything. It's just again, not particularly interesting, but sort of person who has one of these sort of person who might be just like a Skoda Rapid or something like that and um, those aren't the most exciting cars ever but they are sort of quite good they just don't really produce a lot of excitement and the Pulsar is probably like that and that's 1.6 that would be quite fast anyway I think that's quite enough of me waffling on again now let's um, go for another spin shall we Certainly compared with a lot of the lesser engines, something like the Skoda Rapid or say at Toledo, this feels sort of quite lively and quite urgent. You need to go up to something like the 108 um, brake horsepower 
1.2 turbo in the Rapid or the Toledo to sort of get this level of excitement. Excitement in a C13 Pulsar. I think you probably could have some some fun in um, in one of these because it's it's all right. The steering's quite light. There's not a lot of feedback, but it's all right. Apparently, this car's got active trace control, which enables you to just have a bit more grip through corners. But I can't really feel any benefit at the moment. Let's go a little bit faster and see what happens. I mean, yeah, it pulls well enough. Um, I think 0-60 to this car is about 10 seconds or something. But not necessarily slow or anything like that. I just, just not getting it, getting some feedback, but not really enough to keep me particularly entertained. I think that's really the sort of thing about this car. It's kind of, it's sort of adequate. It's, it's not exciting. It's adequate. And that might be a problem for quite a lot of you, particularly when picking cars in this class, which are a bit more than adequate. So yes, the good old, good old Pulsar. I mean, it, it's it's all right. But I've just driven so many other cars that are just a bit better. Now, yeah, the cabin's nicer than a Skoda Rapid, but then it's even nicer in an Octavia. I mean, Octavia has, um, apart from over legroom, it's got even it's got even more space in this, and there's so many more engine options and things like that. So unless you're like a diehard Nissan fan and you, and you really, really, you know, used to love the old Armiras and things like that. I, I don't know particularly if this will appeal to you. I mean, it might do, but uh, just think about it carefully when there's so many other options out there. Let's now look at some C13 Nissan Volkswagen trim levels. They're not particularly exciting, probably like the rest of the car. They're just the standard Nissan trim levels that were around at the time. Started off with the Vizia, and then the Vizia Limited Edition, the Ascenta, the N Connector, like this one, the N Connector Style, the N Tech, and the Technar. Why Nissan insisted on having two trim levels that sounded exactly the same, I don't know. Other than that, I don't think there's a lot else to say. Um, should you consider a Nissan Pulsar C13 for your hard-earned budget being one of £5,000? I suppose so. I mean, you've got to watch this 1.2 engine. I'm just a bit afraid of that. They're very spacious cars. Like, in some ways, there's more space in here than a Qashqai. And they're not one of these sort of SUVs. So that might appeal to you. So if you're the sort of person that likes an over Skoda Rapid or something like that then this could be for you, that, that, that sort of car. Um, but yes, if you can get 1.6 petrol, then that might be the best one. I think I prefer to stick to something like a Kia C. That would probably be my preference. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Thank you to Dale and Simon at Langley Prestige near Colchester for letting me have a go in this. And um, we shall see you again very soon for some more the reasonably priced motoring. Mm -hmm.